I thought I'd talk real quick about a conversation my husband was having with a friend and then a, a little short conversation I had with a couple of friends yesterday. You know, Jesus came in a way to break the law. He fulfilled all the law, but he actually exposed a higher law, the law of love. And so they were constantly upset with him, those Pharisees and hypocrites, because he was a lawbreaker, because he was exposing the law of the spirit. So my husband and his friend were talking about why diets always fail. Diets never work. They Because once you go on that law, you'll always break that law. And then the condemnation of breaking the law kind of makes you lawless all over again, right? <laughs> it's almost like people that join the army to be told what to do and to be programmed like uh, Stepford Wives. Do this, do that, get up this time, get up that time. This is when you eat, this is what you eat. Some people just don't want to take any responsibility for their choices. <laughs> and... I think there's such a deep spiritual truth to how we are spiritually. Just give me the magic wand. Give me the magic pill. I don't want to have to make choices all day long. You know, it's joy to the just to do judgment. Um, all God's ways are judgment. The spiritual woman judges all things. So what I've learned a lot about myself in the diet world of insanity of being on the law since I was like eight or nine. I think my mom took me to Weight Watchers. <laughs> my my sisters were pretty skinny and I I was just probably a little not normal but fairly normal in weight maybe a little overweight but not much but the more I got sucked into the diet mentality I saw myself as fat and then you know you you go into a lot of hellish diet thinking it's taken me years and years to get out of the cobwebs of the diet mentality and again we can kind of feel safe just being programmed. Tell me what to do. Tell me what to do. It's like the devil will, <laughs> the devil is the master of the law, the diet <laughs> world. And, you know, it's kind of like what, again, what I've been talking about in Romans 7, the husbands that beat you up, they have a contract with a marriage license. We have to write a bill of divorcement to bitterness, malice, wrath, hatred, you know, looking down on people. Even this morning, I was thinking about that, that that is such a snare to our soul. I mean, I understand people's demise. I can make judgments about it, but I don't judge them to condemn them because I really know that the downfall of the human soul based on the word of God and rebellion against the Holy Spirit and God's holy words. So it's not like I am offended because I was there. I was darkness and now I want to be the child of light. So back to the diet thing, which I think it's such a perfect illustration of our spiritual condition. <laughs> because, you know, one of our other friends was talking about um, putting herself under this law. And it's a scripture and it's valid, but there's no room to be led by the spirit when we put ourselves under the law. That's what happened with the Pharisees and the hypocrites. You don't do anything on Sunday. How dare you heal uh, a lame man, Jesus, on Sunday, you total lawless breaker, because a lot of times we can be right, even in situations and with our judgments. But if we're not right in love, we're not right at all. And again, everybody is expounding the government they are of and an ambassador of a kingdom. And, you know, when I read Psychology Today and, you know, I had all kinds of of uh, psychological books that I read, and some of them were even Christians, but I was still the ambassador of leaning on your own understanding, not the spirit-led life. So that's really where, if your righteousness doesn't exceed the righteousness of the Pharisees and the hypocrites, what is that? It's the difference between the law and the law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus. It's the difference between Romans 7 and Romans 8. Thanks be to God. I always do what I don't want to do. Lord, bring me light. Bring me light to understand why do I keep doing the things that I know I shouldn't do. Because if I pray and ask you to help me love you more, love other people better, you're going to keep bringing light into my darkness to see the flesh walk for what it really is. Right? 
So we don't even want to do. God carves his word in our heart and the stuff that we used to do and thought we had to do and thought was so wonderful, we don't even see it that way anymore, right? You can get that way. My husband told me that years ago. You know, he, he was talking about lust and perversion and, for, you know, pornography and all of that. And he said, you know, when God started opening his eyes, he didn't have any desire to chomp out of another, of a woman that five million women were taking a bite out of anymore. He didn't have a, a desire to destroy and defile God's daughters, the creation of God and woman anymore. He started seeing it for what it was. He says, you know, the devil used to call me all the time when I was young and I picked up the phone. 